Hey guys, welcome back. I am finally done with taxes. I've got the whole day on my own. So, I don't, I don't know where to start. It's been a while since I've been here, but i got a bunch of stuff that's going through my head. And I have a drawer right on the left of me. There's like five drawers, and the very top is open containers of polymer clay. And it's just starting to stack up in there. So, I thought, you know what, I better, I better start using some of this stuff. So, we're going to make some tube beads today. But I'm going to do it differently. So, when I make my tube beads, I usually use um, like a square kaleidoscope cane and cut from there. But today... I am going to try using my kumigani to do that. So we got a bunch of clay here. It's not going to be a really big amount that I'm going to make. So, And my biggest debate now is cutting it from the actual cane that I end up making. And putting it on but I'm wondering if I want to texture the cane so that we got a little bit of texture on the tube I might do that another time and see how this works but anyways I'm back to fall colors I don't know why I was gonna make it kind of springy but obviously I didn't do that so we're just gonna take We're going to do some 18 karat gold, some regular gold. I'll do some graphite. I have some silver here, bronze, antique gold. I think that's rose gold. Nope, that's copper. And a regular gold. And I'll probably add some pearl, obviously, because it'll be really, really dark if I don't. We're going to see what we come up with. So I am going to go ahead and just cut these out in little little thingamajiggers here, little squares, and um, I'll come back in a few seconds. Alrighty, so we are back with all our different colors here. And I didn't make a whole lot of bronze, and I don't know why. So I think I'm going to make one more of those. I thought I had five. Sorry about that. And as I'm sitting here cutting all these out, I'm thinking of what I'm trying to accomplish. And how to make this work. So I've never made, like I said, two beads with um, with a makumigani. And I think the biggest thing that I was worried about, I have a cutter here, is when it comes down to reducing it to the size tube that I want, how much am I going to distort the pattern? So I'm going to try and make my inside close to the size that I want. Let me show you an example. So I made these last week. Okay, and with these, what I'm probably going to end up doing to finish them off is adding some clay hishi beads. I don't like the blue. I think I'm going to go with a like a pale green. Okay, so I use this from a kaleidoscope cane. And it turned out good. But I didn't reduce... I didn't reduce the tube that much. And so that way, the, you know, if you do, the pattern's just going to get really long and distorted. So I'm going to try not to do that. So I couldn't find any silver... But what I did have was some white gold, and I mixed it with whatever silver I had left. And I'm looking at this and going, you know, I made I made this cane once. It was a ghost cane. And it was just so pretty. 
and I figured that has to be what I used was a ghost cane. So whether or not I'm going to use all of this, I don't know. So I've got bronze, I've got gold. Let me do an 18 karat gold on top. I'm just going to leave it like that. And I'm going to try and grab... Just different colors here. And I didn't use a whole lot of bronze. So I've got some graphite pearl, some white. So we'll do one more gold on top of that one. And I know that one's really small. Some bronze, we'll do some graphite, we'll do some gold. We'll do a blue and an 18 karat gold here. And another bronze and a graphite pearl, silver, blue. And we've got two more of these. So I'm just going to use that up. Okay, so that's about the same. That's a little bigger. So I'm going to take this graphite over here and put it on this stack. So I've got three stacks, right? I think I'm going to put that just like that. Alright, so we're going to work with this and then this, that could be just a regular Makumi Gani. I don't know yet. Oh, but nope. I got two bronzes right next to each other. So I'm going to pull that bronze off. And then I've got a pearl. Oh, wait. Right. <laughs> this stack's just getting bigger and bigger, isn't it? Alright. So we're going to do this. Okay, and yes, we have to we have to really reduce these down quite a bit. I just wanted to do something small and I always end up doing too big and yet when I make my flowers they always come out too small. Planning for our Vegas trip in a couple of weeks. I have a concert to go to, not this weekend, but next week weekend. And then two weeks after that, we're taking a girls' trip to Vegas. So it'll be my sister-in-laws, my daughter, and I, just to get out of town. This week's been a little tough. It's just everything that could go wrong kind of went wrong. And it just made me basically want to quit everything. I'm getting to the point where I really want to quit, I think, glass. And I love glass, but I just can't seem to get creative with that much. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I am going to sell a lot of my glass off because I have way too much. And then I have probably even more in beads. So it's another thing I need to get rid of, you know? All right, so we're gonna go just a little more. Okay, we're gonna cut it in half. And we're gonna cut it again. So I'm going to see if I can get this at least even here. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four. So we're going to cut it at two inches, and you can see how it's still kind of thick. God, wouldn't that be a nice little cane, too? Just cutting it on that side. 
Eh, we'll go ahead and do it that way. Okay. And we'll do the same thing. You know, this is my absolute color combination that I like the best. Even though it's spring, I do want to make another one of these in spring colors. So, I don't know. I want to make a couple flowers and, like I said, some ghost cane. And just start off. But I think the next video is just going to be me making a ton of cane. And I don't know if anybody wants to watch that. So, I may not make it. I think you pretty much know the foundation of everything already. Alright, so again, I'm just going to pull these out. This one's going to be a little smaller. I'm going to cut that in half one more time. That should be perfect, okay? So now we do all that fun stuff. So I want a, obviously, a round circle. That is always my go-to. And you don't have to use the sharp part. Actually, if you use the, the thicker part, you're going to get those striations running through it, but unfortunately my fingers don't work, so I can't push that all the way in there. So I'm going to do this one, and that one, and yes, I go all the way down. This one, I want a lot of small, small pieces as well. I don't have a credit card here, so I'm just using the dull, eight, the dull part of the knife. And I'm just kind of going back and forth here. And I want this to look busy because of just how small it's going to end up being. Okay, and how about we poke some holes in there. Got this thing right here. smaller holes this might be just a little too small but we're gonna see I can always go back in and do this again to the bottom layers and then the last thing ah that wasn't good. That was stupid, right? Guess you don't realize how strong you are until you do something like that. So, if you're like me and heavy-handed, use a metal um, knitting needle. It would probably be the smart way to go, right? I don't need that much, just here and there. Okay, that should do it. Okay. Now, I want to make this into a nice square. I 
where I get some even cuts because I'm probably going to make a tube, a long tube. Wrap them, roll them, and then cut them. I don't wrap them around anything. Like I know normally some people wrap them around a tube. I have a hard time doing that. I could try it, but normally I have a really hard time doing that. This one, I don't want any holes in it. Because I don't want to see the other side because I'm just using scrap clay. Alright, so now let's get this. Let's see if we can even it all up. Okay, so we've got almost two inches, so we could wrap a one inch, a one inch piece, and this is what I'm using for the inside. But if I go one inch, let's see how big that is. Obviously, it's going to be too big for a tube. I mean, a lot bigger. I mean, our tubes. I like making them um, the size that I've got, maybe even a tad bit bigger. So it's at a quarter of an inch. So literally, you want that a little over half an inch. So I'm going to at least make this as close as I want, or as close as I can to what I want. Okay, something to where I'm not going to have to cut it out too much. And I'm going to use one of these just to make sure that we're kind of even. Okay. See, right there is a good size for a tube, finished tube. So you're going to go a little smaller. Okay. Now, I don't know, again how this is going to work because it's so big. So I'm going to try and squish this down just a little more. not be thin enough but we're gonna see what happens here so I'm just gonna take this top layer off so we got a nice even slice to start with Wow okay and I'm gonna go thin but not too too thin Yeah, you could use your Lucy Clay Slicer. That'd probably be a little faster. Okay. You can make your strip as long as you want. Okay. I have a feeling the centerpiece might be still might be a little too big.
turning it around because that was the end piece and I don't like the way that turned out here. see what happens. I might have cut it a little too thick. So it's kind of there. I'm just a little bit over. <laughs> okay. So now what you're going to do is again you're going to roll it until you get to that size that you want. I don't think I'm going to go as small as the ones that I had it. Because again, it'll distort. Okay, so you get to the point where you have to cut it in half. We're about half an inch. I'm just going to go a little smaller than that. Not quite sure what I'm making with them. So I can make. Hmm. Depending whether I want to make them an inch or even longer than that. I can feel a little bit of air in between there. The one thing cool about doing it. Makumigani is if you don't like the little strip that you get you can take little thin pieces like this what's left over and you can kind of add them on your seam I'm gonna grab a really really thin piece right here okay like that that kind of looks like it's part of the design, but okay. And then just start rolling it again. And I feel like I got an air bubble in here, and I don't know if it's just the very end where the cover no nope. wow it literally I don't know how to explain this this whole black piece inside opened up how that happened I don't know I've never seen that happen before that was a solid piece that was in there and look so I've got this hole and it literally goes, it like separated from, from the gray. I've never, I've never had that happen before. That doesn't make sense at all. Okay, so what happens when you've got a big old screw up like this? <laughs> you just flatten it, you know. So this will now become maybe a, a set of earrings. Okay, and we're going to figure out what happened there. So let me grab another piece. And I mean, this is solid. Just in case. I'm put it in a little circle here. bubbles in here so I'm not 
really sure what happened. So let's try that again. Maybe my piece was just a little too thick. So we're going to try and go a little smaller. Okay. This might be a little thinner. And maybe I will just put them on one by one. Okay, now that one was a perfect match. Okay. Let's see what happens when you try to be efficient. I'm thinking what happened was there must have been just a little bit of air in between. I'll cut that right there. All right, so let's see if we can get this better now. So I have these mask cutters. They're kind of like a totem pole shape. I think that would probably look really cool with this. Okay, so I can get about three pieces if I do one inches. And again, I don't put holes in these at the start. You can. I'm going to try, I guess. I have these things from Pan Tiny Pandora. They're really cool, actually. They are little piercers. And they've got like this little hollow point right there. They go through pretty darn easy. But usually I just take my beads and I drill through them. We're going to try and see if it's easy. I just found these. I, I've had them and like usually I lost them. So I haven't been able to use them. And then I just found them the other day. So I don't have a whole lot of distortion. So I guess that's a good thing, right? Alright, so maybe that's what I will do. And I will make my holes. They do about a two millimeter hole through them. Okay, so we're going to do that with these. We'll cut this one out. But that is basically it. So I'm going to see if I can find one of those. I don't know. I may use that little totem pole I was telling you about. Or I just might use like a square or even a diamond or something. Okay, so got a long way to go on this one. sides here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put holes in these and probably make a bunch of these because as you can see with me even cutting them, some are a little bigger than the other ones, which is okay because I like the variety. But I was really hoping that I made them all the right size and I thought I did, but obviously I didn't. 
So I'm going to put holes in these and I'm going to keep going. And then we're going to see what they look like when they come out of the oven. So they're cool, but I really like the kaleidoscope weight better because, I mean, it's a pattern, but it's a random pattern, so it's okay with what I'm doing. But, you know, these have a, a clear pattern that you can look at and your eyes are going to. This one's just kind of all over the place. So I think I'd rather do it this way. So we might go ahead and make um, a, a square kaleidoscope cane in my next video. And we're going to make the two beads again. But, um, but yeah, have some sort of a pattern instead. So anyways, I'm not going to use all of these. I really just need to make a necklace and a pair of earrings. So I'm thinking about 8 to 10 of these. And then obviously 2 for a pair of earrings. So I'm going to cut up another strip. That should be all I need. I am going to make the centerpiece for this. And um, I'll come back when they're out of the oven. And I'll show you how we'll finish them up. So we'll talk to you soon. Alrighty guys, so we are back and I'll show you our little tubelets. So we got about a total of 14 of them, I think. And I know it's really hard to see on this. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, okay, well I got a little bit more than 14. So this is something that's just a little too hard to do resin on. So I'm just using a clear varnish. And I found this piece of foam. I don't know what was packed in the box that it came from. So basically, I just kind of put the, the varnish on each of them. And I don't want a whole lot of varnish, so I'd like to brush some of it off, but I really didn't plan on using my finger. And I'm just going to stack them in the foam. But I'm afraid if I use a paintbrush that I'll get the little lines from the brush and these. So I'm just using my fingers. Oops, sorry about that. I have not sanded the bottoms, and the bottoms aren't exactly perfectly straight. Mm -hmm. So after I put the varnish on and they dry, I'll go ahead and just sand a little bit off the ends just to make sure. Oh, now that I didn't want to do, and I knew that was going to happen at least once today. So be careful when you do this. Obviously, it's a little messy. Put this somewhere where it's a little closer to me. Oh my goodness, it's twice. Okay, three's the charm, right? Now I'm really making a mess, and I don't have fingers that work really well. Uh, and you don't want it, obviously, to get in the hole. And there we go again. Okay, I'm going to pause it and I'm going to do this again after I... I'll, I'll come back after they're done. Alrighty, well, we got a couple more to do. So I thought I'd come back. So the problem... I haven't lost any more, just so you know. I only dropped that one. But usually when I drill my beads, I start with a 1 16th mandrel or drill bit. And um, if I need to go bigger, depending on what my stringing material is, then I go back and drill it again. So that's why these are kind of falling. Um, normally, they'll sit right on top of it, and pretty snugly. Um, not this time. So, I did have an issue with one. All right, so we're going to let this dry, and thank goodness I have a container of water next to me. 
And the pendant that I'm going to use, that I actually put resin on. It's under the UV lamp now. So hopefully we'll be able to take a look at those soon. And then there's this one that I didn't want to put resin on until after I made the bail for it. I was looking for one of those glue-on bales and I was going to stick it in between the clay. And of course I couldn't find one. So I thought I would just make a bale. So I've got some bronze here. And this is something that you want to put the hole in before you bake it because I am going to curve it up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we don't have any air bubbles in this. And then yes, this will have to go back in the oven and bake some more. And I didn't put it on before I baked this just for the fact that I didn't want to ruin the shape. And so I kind of left it alone. So we're going to take our, our little piece that we were rolling with before. I don't know what I did with it. We're going to start about right there. Got an error in there. Keep this perpendicular here and Well, you know you're getting. Okay, so. I'm just trying to see different sizes. That's going to be really thin, I think. I think I need to go a little thicker. So we're going to cut all of that off right here. And we're going to squish it back. Okay, just make sure you're even. Just a little longer. And on this one, I'm trying to get the ends even because it, it'll be really hard to sand it once it's on the piece. Okay, so that's about the size I would probably use. Okay, but now I'm going to grab some of that cane that we used in there. And I used that other piece that we had. I really liked it. I thought it looked really cool. So I don't want to go that small. And I don't want a whole lot of this. So I'm just going to pull off just some skinny pieces. Okay, and it's not going to cover the whole thing. I'm just going to randomly put them on. In different spots here. Just cut. Okay, so 
we're going to move that over here. And well, when all else fails, just roll it on, right? And I'm going to put this piece right there. Okay. So now we're going to just roll that. So that it's all nice and flat. I could have left it the way it was. It just looked really bare. So. Okay. Just want to make sure it's all in there really nice. And it is. Okay. My ends are nice and neat. So I'm going to want it about right there so now the issue is putting the hole so yes i could wait obviously till after it comes out of the oven but it's really tough around curves so we are going to try really hard to put a hole in it now and i'm just going to have to go in from one side and then go in through the other side instead of trying to get this all the way through. So if you put it up like this and you make sure that you're going straight down, it should be okay. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out where I'm at. Well, this might actually come out the other side. Oop, I'm a little, a little curved right there. So now we're just going to come in in the center here. And we're just going to find that little hole. And there we are. Okay. So the only way I can make sure that it goes all the way through is I'm just going to stick this little metal piece in there. Okay. So we know that we're, we're even. We're all the way through. So now I'm just going to fix it and I'm just lightly going over it. I'm not going really tough because I don't want to lose that hole. Okay, and on this we are going to put it on the tray. And I'm going to get some bacon bond. Uh, oh, this is fun. Okay. I left the top a little rough. I didn't sand the top. Hoping it'll grip it a little better. that but I'm just gonna stick this where the varnish is and wipe that up okay so again you want to make sure that your ends are straight down but I will go in and sand it anyways so I'm not really concerned about it and then I'm just gonna find that perfect That perfect spot for it. And I like having a little bit of that design not showing right there. Okay, so now we're just going to put it right there. Hmm, I'm not sure I like that. And I don't know why I don't like it, I just don't like it. 
I don't know if it's just too wide, not long enough. There's just something about that I don't like. Any ideas? I wish I went live with this. I do have an idea just by looking at it, by actually not having that attached to the top. But maybe drilling a hole, putting a bead. Okay, I think I like that better. Okay, it just didn't look good right on top. So I'm not going to worry about this bacon bond. Get a little bit of alcohol here. Hopefully we can thin some of that out, get rid of some of it. And then I will sand the rest of it. Well, darn. See? It always goes from one idea. And then it ends up going somewhere else. So, I could still do this. But I kind of like it instead of stuck together just a little bit right there. And then put maybe like a, um, a round bead, or I would say a disc bead, and it's not going to be this big. <coughs> but just think of a, I don't know if I can make one. Okay, we're going to go small here. It would be a little bit smaller, but like a disc bead right here, and it'll attach like that. So I think that's the way we're going to do it. I may make a couple of these. We'll do a big one, we'll do a small one. So that's going to be a little smaller than that. And that's going to be just a tad bit smaller there. Okay. So that one's just a little smaller. I think that one's good just the way it is. And that one's just a tad bit smaller. And then I'll drill holes in them when they come out of the oven. All right, so I guess that's not going in the oven. So I can go ahead and resin this. So as far as those tubes, let me see if these are, these look like they're ready to come out. So I found this primitive heart. Okay, so this is made with this cane. And it turned out really nice. So if I don't like this big thing, then I'm just going to attach all those tube beads to this heart. So I'm going to go ahead and throw these in the oven, and um, I think that's it for this video. We'll kind of, yeah, we'll kind of just take a picture of these, and then I'll come back and probably do a necklace with them. So we'll do that in the next video. All right, so you guys have a great day. Thanks. Bye.